Welcome back to Keep Idaho Red Radio on KIDO 580 AM 105, 107.5 FM. And we're on KLIX in the Magic Valley, Tom. Yes. And uh, we're just blessed to have yet another uh, stellar guest on Keep Idaho Red Radio. And that is Assistant Majority Leader Jason Monks, who is uh, in Legislative District 22. Hey, bo- uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, uh, Victor and Tom. Appreciate you. Hey, just... Uh, Educate someone real quick. What does the assistant minority leader, what does the assistant majority leader do in, in the House? So, you, you know, we all have um, kind of some responsibilities that are, I would say, on paper. And then there's things that aren't on paper. Um, for example, the speaker, you know, he kind of, uh, you know, runs the floor out there. Uh, you know, the majority leader, um, he helps with that. The assistant majority leader also does um, general orders. You know, the caucus chair governs caucus meetings, um, but really, we've been functioning as a as a leadership team, um, helping to guide and direct the directions of the legislative process. And in in uh, Congress, you know, they call the assistant majority leader the whip. Um, we kind of do it a little bit differently. Instead of convincing everybody else what to do, it's more of a information gathering. What do you want us to do as leadership? Um, I think that's the most important part about um, being in leadership here in Idaho. You know, we're going to talk, uh, uh, Representative Monks, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, later uh, about the fact that we've got a lot of candidates on the ballot and why certain races in Ada County are so important. And, I, you know, your, your, uh, your clarion call to get people to vote. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize that there's other things on the ballots that uh, are going to be coming up in November. And one thing that you and I were talking about before that you really wanted to make people aware of is that there is actually a constitutional amendment that's going to be on the ballots for all Idahoans uh, this year in the November election. So uh, can you tell people what that constitutional amendment is and and why you would vote for it? Absolutely. So if you look at, you know, our three branches of government, um, the uh, courts, they can pick up whatever cases they want. They work when they want. Um, The uh, governor same thing. He's there all the time. Um, whereas the legislative branch, we have a set time when we go there to do our work. And then once we sign a die, we cannot come back until the next year. And what happens is if there's a problem in the middle of the year that we didn't foresee or something that comes up, we have to rely on the governor to call us back, kind of like we did with this special session. He called us back. One of the hazards with that or the disadvantages for the legislative branch is that we don't get to set the agenda. He can set a very specific agenda and the subjects which we can talk about, and that's all we can do during a special session. This constitutional amendment allows the legislature to call ourselves back in. Now, there's a process by which we have to do that. I think we have to have 60 percent of the House and 60 percent of the uh, Senate has to agree to do that they contact their uh, respective leader there with the speaker and the pro tem and um, make that notification. And then we can call ourselves back in. The vast majority of states can already do that. Idaho just happened to have our constitution written at a time when um, they didn't include that power. And so uh, it's, it's super important for us to be able to get in there, um, put ourselves on an equal playing field with the other branches of government and, um, uh, be able to address problems that might come up uh, when we're not in session. Representative uh, Monks, uh, fo- follow-up question, and thanks for being on Keep Idaho Red Radio uh, program with us on 580 KIDO and KLIX in the Magic Valley. Hey, uh, so uh, the question I have is, uh, um, uh, so, so just be clear, if people want the, the, the legislature to be able to call themselves back, then is this a yes vote? When they go to the ballot? Correct. Okay. Correct. Oftentimes, that's not the case, and it gets very confusing, right, as to whether you should vote yes or no. On It depends on how the language is written. When you talk about other states that are doing, uh, have the ability to call themselves back, is there a legitimate concern about, you know, just gradually ending up and in, in, in you have a year-round legislature? You know, that's, that's always a concern, and, and – from my perspective, this actually prevents us from becoming a year-round legislature. A couple of years ago, um, when we were having some, some concerns with, with things coming up, the House did not sign a die for the year. We left ourselves in session 
uh, for this very reason. And so what will happen, um, whether it's this legislature or, or future legislatures, they will realize that if we can't call ourselves back in, then we're just not going to sign a die or sign a DA for the, uh, the year, and we'll just stay in. So in my opinion, this actually prevents or helps prevent Idaho from having a year-round legislature. Got it. Let, let's shift gears real quick and talk about one of the um, uh, results of the special session. And uh, we had the governor on uh, just before you. And uh, one of the things we talked about was the uh, four, over $400 million going uh, towards education. And so um, what we want to talk to you about is um, there's still decisions to be made on how that $400 million will be spent. We know that $80 million is going to focus on a career technical uh, type of education and retraining programs. Uh, $330 million is focused on, um, on K-12. Uh, what, will the, what will the legislature's role be when you come back in January with how these funds will be uh, uh, specifically spent? And what are the options? Yeah, what are the options that, that you're, you're considering? Choose? Great question. I think the first thing that is important to remember is the money that was set aside or designated for education during the special session um, does not necessarily have to be new money. Uh, currently, we spend over a billion dollars on education from sales tax already. That's about what we do every year, or at least the last several years. Uh, this bill says we will do at least 410 million from specifically sales tax, and it will go through education in the formula that you had mentioned. So. Um, so that's kind of the most important thing, I think, to remember. But secondly, then, what will the legislature do with that money? And that's the legislative process. And that's one of the most important functions of the legislature is to appropriate monies as far as where it's going to go. I think I'm optimistic and hopeful that we will use that um, either one of two ways. I would love to see us use this more for school choice, um, putting money back directly into Amen. the parents' hands so that they can. Uh, use this money however they choose uh, to, to use it. And if that means putting their kids into private schools, that's what it means. So I'm, I'm hoping at least that is one option that I would love to see. Uh, the other option that um, I wouldn't mind seeing also is to use this money for property tax relief. We could take this money and pay down most of, or at least make the payments for every bond that is in the state um, and then uh, use that money for building buildings so that we don't have to bond in the future. Uh, so it could be used, used, you know, have $410 million of property tax relief uh, to our citizens. So there's a lot of options available for us. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll do some, some uh, more school choice and property tax relief with this money. When you talk about school choice, do you see um, uh, it like expanding the empowering parents funds and maybe adding allowable uses for example, uh, uh, school choice in, in how uh, families can use those funds? You know, um, aside from the education money here with this Constitution Amendment, I am hopeful and optimistic that this will be the year that Idaho will join the ranks of a true school choice program where um, not just a small select group of people can pull their kids and put them into an education system that they want, but all parents would have that option. And so um, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's a true school choice where the money will follow the students and uh, the parents can determine where the best place for their child to get educated is. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about the $80 million going to career and technical and why that was important uh, that the legislature specifically identify that as a need and and the benefit that the individuals in the state will see from that. Yeah, the in-career demand money, right? There you go. Correct. And, and that was a, something that the legislature kind of fought for uh, before we even got into the session, uh, was that it was kind of designated for higher education, mostly going to colleges. And I think uh, we recognize that college is not always the path for, um, for all kids, and it's not always the best path. And... Uh, you know, we've got huge job demand right now, and that's where we thought the money should be best spent is to help uh, fill these high demand jobs, get um, our youth prepared for a good career. Path. Yeah. Oh, we're with uh, Representative Jason Monks. We're on Keep Idaho Red Radio, KIDO, KLIX. Um, 
you know, we've got these elections coming up and it's going to be, especially in Ada County where you are and it's, uh, legislative district 22, which you serve in, there's going to be some competitive races. And what is your, you know, as, as leadership, you get to see what the other side's been doing, the Democrats, you see what the Republican uh, policies have been and agendas. What is the case for people to come out in droves this year and vote for Republicans in uh, in November of 2022? Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> I've got to, I, I spent a lot of time on a minute and a half. This one. Oh, wow. Um, let me let me touch on a couple things. You know, it wasn't too long ago when District 18 in Boise area was a Republican district, and it shifted. And it has never shifted back since then. District 15 is, is in one of those purple areas right now where it's been shifting back and forth. And frankly, um, I think District 22, the one I'm in, the Democrats have targeted as another district that they're trying to move into. With the redistricting, our District 22 moved a little bit more into Boise. And um, as we know, they're a little bit, uh, a lot of it bluer than the rest of the state. And so... Democrats have raised a ton of money uh, right now. If you look at our statewide offices, I believe they've outraised uh, the Attorney General for Raul Labrador's race there and uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor with Scott Bedke there. I think they've outraised them already. Yes. And in District 22, that's the case as well. Um, in District 15, yep. that's the case. Uh, they have outraised us significantly in the money side, and the only way we're going to be able to combat that is to show up in droves, like you mentioned, at the uh, the polls. All right, and Representative Monks, we're going to be focusing on those candidates and giving them all the airtime and help that we can, and we appreciate your leadership. Uh, thanks for being on Keep Idaho Red radio program, and folks, uh, Tom Loon and Vic Miller will be right back. 